Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So are you looking to add security to your home? Because I am, and let me tell you why. I live in a pretty nice neighborhood and been here 15, 16 years, never had any issues with any kind of um, break-ins or any of that. But the other night, someone broke into my car in my driveway at 2.30 in the morning at my house. And while they got like $8 out of my car, is, so it's no big deal. It's really frustrating. And I did call the police. I did give them the video footage that I had because I have a Nest camera that sits above uh, the driveway on my garage. I realized there's a huge gap in my coverage to the right of my car looking out towards the street. And so I didn't have any kind of visual of the face. But they did get some pretty good images and captures from my other cameras. It made me think that I need to up my game and I need to add some additional security cameras. Again, it's not going to prevent it, but hopefully it can create a situation where I can provide enough information to the authorities that they can find these people and, you know, lock them up. <laughs> so, but it's really kind of frustrating. So today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new MyQ smart outdoor wired camera. Now this is their first outdoor wired camera they have. They do have an indoor camera, which I actually use in my garage. And of course they have the wireless keypad that I use on the outside of the garage door for remote entry and things like that. And this is the first outdoor camera. So I'm really looking forward to getting this unboxed, getting it tested and yeah, getting that coverage for the areas that I'm obviously lacking in. So let's unbox it and see what we got. And then once I get it unboxed and we kind of take a look at it, I'll go over some of the features and then I'm going to go get it actually mounted and we're going to test it. We're going to set it up. I expect the setup process to be simple and pretty straightforward, just like the other MyQ products. They've all been super easy to install and they've been extremely reliable and I really like their products. I wish they actually had more of the smart home security remote access type components, but I'm sure, you know, they're working on it because this is brand new. It seems like they're actually trying to move forward in that space. So that would be awesome. So here's a few features that you can see on the back of the box. It is a 1080 camera. So you get that 1080p HD image, which the outdoor keypad has, and it looks fantastic. You also get the motion detection, which again, both of the other cameras I use for my Q do motion detection, and they're actually have a very good sensitivity range. So you can, you know, make it not as sensitive if you don't want to capture, you know, too much movement and you want things to come closer in order for it to actually see it, or you can set sensitivity really high. Uh, it does have the live streaming capability. And I imagine you'd probably have to utilize the MyQ subscription in order to uh, use a lot of the remote features. But I already subscribed to it and it covers all the cameras. So it's not a per camera charge. It's a one flat fee for all your cameras. And it's got a 130 degree field of view, which I'm going to be really curious to see exactly how the coverage is going to look. I might have to kind of play with the setting just a little bit. And it has a 25 foot cable for you to plug it in. So that's a long cable. And I'm probably going to need that because I don't have any like close plugs where I want to be able to use this at. So I think that's probably going to come in pretty handy to have that long cable. And of course it has the two way talk capability, just like the other cameras do. So really looking forward to getting this in place and working. So let's see what we got. So this actually looks really similar to the other camera I use in the garage that's wired that uh, I actually have mounted on the bottom of my garage door opener, but it's just interior only. And as you can see, that's a really nice, small, compact camera. And that's pretty nice. I like that. It's lightweight and uh, small, inconspicuous. So you should be able to mount this almost anywhere as long as you can get power to it. But, you know, here's something that, Again, I don't understand why people are still putting micro SD on a device. Why not use USB-C? It's like the, 
everything has USB-C. At any rate, that's just one of the weird frustrations that I find. A lot of these manufacturers, they some of them just don't follow suit. <laughs> At any rate. But that's okay, because, you know, it is what it is. But here's the adapter. I like that actually they give you a USB power on this end as well. So you don't have to like be messing with the cable trying to get it all set up. Every component is like its own component, which I actually like a lot because as you can see, this is a pretty long cable and it'd be kind of a pain to have to be messing with the cable while you're mounting the camera. And so this is a super nice feature. I also like too that they give you that as a 90 degree angled plug for the camera. So that way, you know, the cable can be nice and flat, you know, as it's coming out of the bottom. See there? So that's going to be pretty nice. But to give you a nice long, you know, 25 foot USB cable is awesome. And that's really it that's in the box. I mean, it's not a lot to it. It's pretty simple. They do give you a couple of mounting screws with some anchors. But I think because of where I'm going to mount it, I'm going to have to use my... Um, concrete brick anchors so i'll be drilling some holes in the wall and then mounting it so this is the mounting plate and as you can see it does have a um, an indicator you know that points the direction that it should be you know facing when you mount it and i'm sure that has to make sure that the camera it, when you click it in that it actually is upright and you're not crooked or sideways so, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I don't... Oh, I see. Huh. Nice. So, this can actually unscrew. So, you can actually, you know, not worry about the camera. You can set the camera aside. You can mount your plate. You can mount this on the plate. And then once it's where you want it, then you can just screw the camera back on. Because that ring spins around. So, that's nice. I like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility in how you can move the camera. So all you'd have to do is loosen that ring and you'd be able to move this camera in almost any direction. That's nice. I like that. So I'm going to head down to the garage and I'm going to get this thing mounted and then we'll uh, pair it and see what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, uh, here's my indoor camera that I have for my Q that is mounted here that kind of monitors when the garage doors open and close. It also helps you um, be able to use the Amazon in garage delivery, which I've used many times and it's pretty nice. And of course, over here I have my um, keypad and it has worked out amazing as well. Now, as you can see, here's my car and this camera has, I'm standing kind of where my keypad would be looking, and it has a really good vantage point, but I had the sensitivity turned down intentionally because I didn't want to catch a lot of movement on the road, but it also made me realize that um, it's leaving me kind of vulnerable because when they were at the car, it didn't trigger the camera because it couldn't see them because I don't have the sensitivity high enough. So I've changed that. I've actually kicked the sensitivity up. And of course, over here is the area that I'm really lacking coverage, right here in this driveway area. So my intention is to be able to mount it up here in the corner somewhere and then run the power up through the corner here in the garage inside here and plug it into here, into that power strip. So um, we'll see how that goes. But there is the Nest camera that I have that monitors this. And now it has a, um, as you can see, it has floodlights on it and it is motion triggered. And of course the lights did come on and it did, you know, record. Of course it records continuously, but again, not really thinking about coverage. When I set that camera up, I have it to where it just kind of cuts off right at the side of the vehicle. So while you can see like the steering wheel and everything, you can't see the actual door like when it opens. So it didn't catch any of that. So let's see where I can get this mounted and then we'll uh, get it plugged in and see what it looks like. 
Okay, so a couple things that every homeowner should have. One is a cordless drill. This thing here, you can use as a screwdriver, a drill. It has multi-uses and it's amazing. You can get Craftsman, you can get um, Milwaukee. I mean, there's all kinds of manufacturers that manufacture these. And it doesn't really matter even if it's just like a, a small home project, almost any uh, cordless drill will do. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting some super high power drill. So here I have my mason bits. And as you can see, they are specific for masonry, which is something you want to make sure you have because like a regular wood bit is not going to, um, it's not going to cut it. Even though I'm only actually going to be drilling into the little mortar strip because the camera's so light, I'm not going to have to worry about it pulling out. However, so the mason anchor screws I have are too fat. And unfortunately, the hole they give you to put it in is not big enough for the screw. So I'm gonna to have to use their screws and their anchors, which I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal, but as you can see, they're much smaller and they'll fit through the holes. So that's what I'm gonna to have to use. Uh, again, not a huge deal, but um, they're a little shorter than I wanted, but it should be fine. Worst case scenario, if these don't hold as well as I want, then I can just go to the hardware store and get some different you know, masonry screws and you know, redo the anchors. So not a huge deal. So let's get this screwed in. All right, so I know this is a little far away, but I want to get the whole kind of picture. So I'm actually going to be putting it into this mason channel right here where these two bricks meet. Um, and then I'm going to be able to actually run the cable down this strip right here to where I can kind of set it on top of this ledge and it won't be quite as obvious. And then I can just route it right around the corner. So I think it's going to work out perfect. So I'll probably be mounting the bracket like this and then just run the cord down and over i don't know i might have to rethink that maybe i'll just actually put it in the brick itself okay actually i think it's going to be okay so um, i should be able to mount the anchors in that strip without too much problem okay as they say here goes nothing perfect get a hammer pound that in and we should be in good shape uh, let's make sure i got it far enough in that's about as deep as it gets Look, I'm all about power tools. Now this is just an electric screwdriver. Can't do any drilling with it, but it's great for little screws. Oh, that's actually perfect. Nice. Love it when the plan comes together. So one thing I don't have is pockets for everything. Oh, that is perfect. All right. You know, sometimes the, uh, the mortar strip can be really brittle. And like when you start drilling into it, it'll just kind of break apart. I'm really glad that this is a really firm, good mortar and it's not uh, like, you know, shredding or breaking apart or chipping. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of extra cable, but I'm not going to, you know, leave all this extra out here. I just wasn't sure how much I needed. So once I get the camera mounted, then I'll actually route the extra cable back into the garage and I'll wrap it around that screw. And see, again, one nice thing I like about this is the camera and this mounting bracket are separate. I can mount this to the wall and then I can use this ring and screw the camera to it so I don't have to fumble with the camera. And if you notice, I left the protective film on this until I get done. And once I get it mounted and powered on, then I'll take the film off of it. So let's get this mounted up and then we'll get the camera screwed to it. I couldn't have done it better myself. <laughs> Wait, I did do it. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I mean, it is tight, it's snug. This is all the way seated. And so again, you wanna make sure the MyQ logo is up and then you have this ring here that you can just simply screw back onto the base. So I'm just gonna kind of snug it for the moment until I get it plugged in and we get it paired up and then I'll you know, be able to check the uh, actual angle and readjust it. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, um, on the plug, both here and the one on the actual plug in the garage, it has a rubber seal around this area here where the plug goes. So even if the actual, you know, part that you plug into the receptacle is outside it has a weather seal which is a nice thought and i see the light coming on so i know the camera is powered on and i'm not going to pair it just yet i'm going to go ahead and get the cable routed and get that you know situated and then we'll get it paired okay so you see how that's routed i think it looks pretty good uh, i'm gonna get another little bracket and i can kind of tighten that up there that is perfect it's going up to that little slot Keep it out of the way of the garage. I've got it wrapped around that right there. And I got it plugged in right there. So let's recap and then we're gonna get this set up in the app. It's plugged in there. 
wrapped around there, radius is there, routed it around here, then routed it around there, then routed it there, cross, and mounted. And I think that come out pretty excellent. Okay, so installation done as far as getting it mounted in the hardware. So we're gonna wrap this up and then I'm gonna be back in the app and we're gonna set the camera up in the app and then I'll actually be adjusting the camera as far as its visuals once I get it set up in the app. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out here real quick is you always wanna make sure you go into the device and check for firmware. This does have a firmware update. So we are going to go ahead and update the firmware and that way it'll have all the current capabilities bug fixes and things like that already set up in it so uh, always want to do that let's go into my queue and i'm going to add a new device here and it's going to be see now it says video solution before it just said uh i think indoor camera but so we go video solution and there it is right there outdoor camera next looking for devices there it is pair i'm gonna say do later because i've already done it i'm not have to worry about reconnecting it so between that camera view and this camera view which this is the keypad that's outside the garage i got it all right there that is awesome all right that looks good yeah okay so that installation went about as expected the camera is extremely small, as you can see in the picture here. Um, it's not really that noticeable. And I think if you were walking up to the house and you didn't know it was there, you probably wouldn't notice it. Um, there's a few little things I need to get some additional like brackets or um, hangers, whatnot, so I can actually get the cable to lie a little bit flatter against the wall. But the camera's secure, it's in a great spot. And now between my Nest camera over the garage door, my MyQ wireless garage door keypad, and the MyQ smart outdoor wired camera, nobody's coming up to my house without me knowing about it. Oh, and I almost forgot my Nest doorbell camera. So front of the house covered, awesome. Garage door side of the house covered, awesome because I have a back Nest camera on the back corner of the house. And then in the backyard, I have two cameras in the backyard as well, one right above my back door that looks underneath my patio. And then I have another one on the corner that looks to the rest of the yard. If something does happen to my house, I'm gonna have a recording of it because all of these cameras, they're wired. There's one wireless one, the Nest, that's out on the patio. And it does not do 24 continuous recording it only does recording of events so that way i don't run the battery dead because obviously it's wireless there's no power um so i don't want to run the battery you know down too much but the camera on the corner of the house is wired so they all do 24 hour seven days a week continuous recording so i can actually go back and review all of the footage like i did for the police when they broke into my car and find whatever video segment I need, clip it, download it, whatever I gotta do with it. And that was really what I wanted to make sure I had the ability to do is provide documentation. And it also lets me know when I'm not here, what's going on around my house so that if I need to call somebody, maybe even the police, fire, whatever the case may be, I can know what's happening. And I gotta get a battery backup for the camera that I just installed because since it plugs in, I can actually put a battery backup on it. I'll be able to maintain my video feed until the battery runs out because I already have my access point and my main router slash modem on a battery backup. And I think the last time that we had an extended power outage, it was like three hours. And I had internet for probably a good hour, hour and a half after the power went out because there's not much running on these little battery backups, just you know, small devices that don't take a lot of power. So I was able to maintain connectivity, which was fantastic because the internet still worked, but nothing in the house was powered except those devices. So that's gonna add a huge benefit to me. So I would highly recommend if you have something like that, that you consider you know, the whole battery backup situation, make sure your, your internet provider modem 
if you have a wireless router or your own routing device, make sure your access points, maybe a camera like this one, make sure they have uninterruptible power, little battery backups. You can get it pretty inexpensive. I would highly recommend you use APC. APC is made by Schneider Electric. Been in the battery backup business for a very, very long time. I am an IT professional and we use the APC products for all of our server equipment and it just works flawlessly. Keep things protected. Battery backup's a must. If you want your house secure, this is a device for you. I mean, between the keypad and this camera and my Nest cameras, again, I am well monitored and it makes me feel much better to know that I can see what's going on anytime, anywhere, no matter what. Even if power goes out, I'll have a little bit of time to view what's happening. So, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. So I can't recommend this camera enough. It was easy to set up. The installation was the hardest part, just moving ladders around, <laughs> drilling holes in the heat, but um, it wasn't too bad. Their cameras only support 2.4, so... I had to move my phone over to my 2.4 SSID because I broadcast two different networks in order to get connected to the camera. Once I did that, the whole installation into the app was seamless. Paired Bluetooth, added to Wi-Fi. It was just boom, boom, boom. And which is what the other devices did. So it's nice to see it's following suit. Make sure you do the old YouTube algorithm a favor and give the thumbs up on this video if you like it. I would sure appreciate it. And you're definitely going to want to watch this video here, which goes over my MyQ garage door video keypad. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.